第三部分呢，我们就讲解一下第四和第六题。那么首先呢，来看一下三十二题的第四题。那么第四题呀、啊，也是阅读一段材料，然后通常呢，这段材料啊是关于一个专有名词的。那么这段材料啊，很明显就 choice supportive bias。我们需要注意这个名词周围的句子，或者是断首断尾的句子都是非常关键的。我们先来审一下材料。People often make decisions by considering the advantages. <coughs> the advantages. People often make decisions by considering the advantages and disadvantages of each option. However, after a person selects an option. There is a tendency for that person to exhibit the choice supportive bias. After selecting an option, a person may begin to favor that option. Without being fully aware of it, people who exhibit this bias tend to focus on and remember only the advantages of the option they selected. As time passes. They will overlook the options' disadvantages, eventually even forgetting them. 那么这个地方呢，就讲述了这样一个 bias。那么题目中啊，也是要求咱们啊，一定要解释一下 the choice supportive bias， 也就是啊，人们开始注意的是它的 advantages， 而不是 disadvantages。而且慢慢的，大家就会忽略。那么这样一个趋势。那么首先呢，我们要先解释一下 what is choice supportive bias。那么很明显，我们就需要从材料中提取了。那么接着啊，我们就要用听力材料中出现的 example 来解释它。那么阐述 example 的时候啊，大家一定要注意，那么前后的这个过程顺序是怎样的？一定要注意它发生的整个事情的这样一个步骤，可以用一二三四五标注出来。大家可以养成这样一个做笔记啊。这样一个好的习惯一定要快，大家可以用一些自己习惯的符号或首字母来代替，这个都可以的，只要自己能看懂。那么接着呢，我们就先来听一下听力。Now listen to part of a lecture on this topic in a psychology class. Okay, so an example of this from my own life. Five or six years ago, I was helping a friend of mine decide on a house to buy. He had been in the market to buy a house, and he had it narrowed down to this one house that he was interested in. What he really liked about this house was it had an excellent location. It was in a great place that was actually in the same part of town where he was working, right up the street from his job, so he wouldn't have far to drive to get to work, which he really liked. However, the downside of this house was that it was smaller than what he was hoping to buy. He had wanted to buy sort of a big house, and this house just wasn't that big, so it was a tough decision. But my friend eventually did decide to buy the house, and a few years after he made the purchase, I remember we were talking about the decision and why he decided to buy the house. He told me, "Well, of course, it was because of the house's location." He told me how happy he was with the fact that it was so close to his work. How great it was that it was only a few minutes from his job. I said yes, but what about its size? Do you still think the house is kind of small? And he looked at me kind of surprised. Small? What do you mean small? Like he didn't know what I was talking about. The house's size, a couple of years after buying it, just didn't seem to be on his mind anymore. 好的，听力过后呢，我们就啊。答题第一个步骤就开始了。那么第一个啊，就是给出它的 definition. Choice supportive bias is a tendency that after people make a choice, they will favor that option and only remember the advantages of their choice, and overlook or even forget the disadvantages of their decision. <coughs> 一定要用到这个 tendency， 那么这就是这样一个趋势，这个也是在原文中出现的。Just like the example of the professor's friend, he was looking for a house to buy, and he found this house with a great location because it's close to his workplace. However, the house was smaller when he wanted to buy a bigger one. He eventually bought the house. After a few years, when he was asked about the house, he said that he was really happy about the fact. That the house is close to his work, and the size issue was hardly on his mind. 
which means he only remembered the advantages and forgot the disadvantages of his choice. 那么就是这样一个整个的过程，咱们都需要听出来。那么做听力的时候啊，一定要注意记笔记。那么最常用的就是咱们这个八字的笔记。比如说啊，第一个 arguments， 那么就是咱们的这个观点是什么，或者是解释这个 definition 是什么。说出来以后呀、啊，咱们接着就是 examples。那么 example 里面啊，你可以这样记，也可以啊这样记，都是可以的。但唯一就是啊，大家不要尝试去记整句，一定要记一些关键词，这样还是比较省时间的。我们接着来看下一套题的第四题。An animal species needs to have enough resources, like food and water, to survive in any given environment. However, because resources are limited, only a certain number of animals of a particular species are able to survive in a given habitat. The greatest number a habitat can support is known as the carrying capacity. 那么很明显啊，这个段材料还算比较简单的，已经把 definition 啊。给出咱们了，那么咱们只需要把这块找出来就可以了。If nothing happens to disrupt or unbalance the relationship between the animal and its habitat, the carrying capacity will remain stable. However, a carrying capacity is not fixed. There is a significant disruption, such as an environmental event, that alters. The amount of available resources in the habitat, the carrying capacity will change. 那么上一段啊给出了这个定义以后啊，接着就说 the carrying capacity 啊并不是固定的。那么他们会根据什么来呃改变呢？也就是说 significant disruption， 还有就是 environmental event， 那么就会把这样一些情景改变，就会直接改变到这个 carrying capacity。那么咱们看完第一部分啊，觉得找到自己的 definition 以后啊，不要就直接忽略到后面一部分，因为 definition 啊最好是包括后面这一部分的。那么分两段啊，都要都要概括到。那么咱们在回答的时候啊，一定要首先啊把它给出的 definition 给出来，而且它这个改变这个条件也要回答出来。我们就来审一下这个题 ：Explain the concept of carrying capacity using the example of the moth and ragwort. 大家一看这个词就懵了啊，这是一种植物。那么咱们不知道它是什么的时候啊，咱们就害怕了。通常而言，咱们遇到这种不认识的生词啊，心里面就开始打怵了。但其实大家不要担心，这只是一种植物而已。那么一看到 moth， 咱们认识蛾子嘛？那么蛾子吃的一种植物，咱们知道就可以了呀。然后 explain the concept。那么第一步呢，就是要把这个 definition 给出来。那么就包含两部分内容了。然后第二部分呢，就是。Example， 那么前后是怎么改变的？咱们一定要听出来。那么知道这题目的要求以后啊，咱们就一起来听一下听力。Now listen to part of a lecture in a biology class. Okay, so let's talk about what happened to a certain type of insect, a moth, a red and black moth that lives in Europe. These moths eat a plant called ragwort, and they live in fields where the ragwort plants grow. Now there was a group of moths that lived in one of these fields, and for many years there was a lot of ragwort growing there. So the moths had plenty to eat, and the total number of moths in the field stayed pretty much the same. But then one year it rained a lot less than usual, and the ragwort didn't grow as well. The result was that the moths didn't get enough to eat, and many didn't survive. But even the ones that did survive didn't lay as many eggs as before, so that year the moth population in the field was quite a bit smaller. The next year, though, the amount of rainfall returned to normal again. Many more ragwort plants grew, and once again there was a lot available for the moths to eat. So that year the moth population increased, and the female moths laid many more eggs than the year before. And now, after all that rainfall and plant growth, there were just as many moths in the ragwort field as there were before. 好的，听力过后呢，我们还是啊，先给出一个 definition. Carrying capacity is the greatest number of animals a habitat can support. This number usually remains stable, but it might change when there is a significant disruption. 
这后半句啊，是不是就是对，对咱们后半部分材料啊的一个总结？所以前前后两段材料都一定要涉及到。Just like the example of moths, moths eat a kind of plant called ragwort. The moths live in a place where there is a lot of ragwort, and the total number of moths that live there generally stays the same over the years. 基本上是平衡的。However, one year it rained less, and ragwort didn't grow well, so many moths didn't survive because there wasn't enough to eat. Also, female moths didn't lay as many eggs, therefore, the population of moths decreased. 那么就是发生重大改变以后啊，这个动物也受到牵连了。The situation returned the next year. And ragwort grew a lot better. As a result, the number of moths increased, and female moths laid more eggs. Now there are as many moths as there was before. 也就是说，环境啊，对这个动植物的这个改变呀、啊，就非常直接了。那么这个地方所承载的这样一些动物的数量啊，不是固定不变的，也会根据环境来改变。这就是 definition 所给出来的。那么。同样的，就是这前后是怎么变化的，都是需要咱们在听力材料中所听出来的。我们接着来看一下第六题。那么第六题啊，通常也是来解释一个现象的，而且学术性较强。咱们同样的，一看到这个词又有点发懵了。那么这个词咱不认识，那么这个词基本上认识一半，对吧？大家不要担心这样一些生词啊，其实只要。看看后半部分，咱们就知道。Describe two ways roads can affect the environment. 我们看到 roads affect the environment， 环境是怎样被改变的。那么不管啊，前面是什么东西，不管是植物也好啊，动物也好啊，咱们不理解没有关系，咱们可以用拼音记下来都可以，只要你能说出来就可以了。那么做听力的时候，一定要注意这两个动物、植物的区分。那么前面第一个 example 说的是哪一个？第二个 example 说的是哪一个？咱们标号可以听听力的时候标号，比如 arguments， 然后 examples 这样子，或者是 arguments， 然后下面 examples。你大家习惯哪一种笔记就用哪一种。那么知道这个题目的要求以后啊，咱们就一起来听一下听力。Number six, listen to part of a lecture in an environmental science class. Roads. Paved roads are everywhere and sometimes seem like part of the natural landscape. But of course, roads are not part of nature, and in fact, road construction can have harmful effects on the environment and seriously impact both animal life and plant life. One harmful environmental effect of roads is that they contribute to the movement of plant species from one area to another. This causes problems for existing plants, plants already growing in that area. Because when a new plant species gets introduced into an area where it wasn't growing before, the new plants compete for resources with the existing plant life. For example, this happened in California with a weed called the yellow star thistle. What happened was the star thistle seeds got stuck to the tires of cars driving down the road, and the seeds were distributed to new areas. This put the star thistle in competition for natural resources like water with the original plant life of the area. That made it harder for the native plants to survive. Also, roads, especially major highways, can act as barriers and divide up an animal's habitat into smaller ones where there's not enough food to support the population. These busy highways, with cars speeding past day and night. Act like boundaries that animals are afraid to cross, so they sometimes get shut in on a small piece of land where there isn't enough food to support them. This is a serious problem for animals that need access to large expanses of land to look for food. For example, there are these foxes called kit foxes that live in the southwestern United States. They hunt small animals like mice and squirrels, which are spread out over large areas of open grasslands. And now, because of these roads, the kit fox population has declined significantly, because now they don't get enough food. 好的，听力听完以后啊，咱们就先来一个总括的句子。There are two ways roads can affect the environment. 那么显得咱们哎，回答问题啊，比较有有头有尾的。
The first way is that they contribute to movement of plant species, and new plants compete for resources of other native plants. For example, when the yellow star thistle is stuck to ties, it will be distributed to a new area where it competes for water so that it is hard for native plants to survive. The second way is that they become barrier for animals. Animals are afraid to cross highways, so they are shut in small areas where they can't get enough food. This is hard for animals that need food which are spread over a large expansion of land. For example, kid foxes hunt for mice that are spread out in a large expansion of grassland. The road is constructed, their numbers declined because they can't get enough food. The first way, the second way, Using the example of the pizza restaurant explain two advantages of franchising. franchising. So 这就是常见的八字记笔记的办法。那么知道这个题目的要求呀，我们首先来听一下听力。Number six. Number six. Listen to part of a talk in a business class. Okay. So last time we were talking about the process of starting up a business on your own, and how new business owners often encounter a lot of obstacles. But one way to get an easier start is through franchising. That's when there's already a well-known established company and you open up a new branch of that company in a new location. Your new business will be a part of the larger established company with the same name and it'll be run just like the other branches of that company. Let's discuss some advantages of franchising. Now, one great advantage of franchising is that the company provides training to you and all of your employees. They teach you about all the aspects of the business and you're given a plan to follow for success. So you don't have to do the training yourself or come up with your own business plan. For example, if you're opening a new division of a restaurant that sells pizza, say, somebody from the company will come to the restaurant that you're opening and they'll train you and your employees in how to prepare the pizzas, how to take food orders, plus everything about how to operate the restaurant so it will be run exactly like all the other restaurants in the company. Another advantage of franchising is the established customer base. Because your business will have the same name as the company that's already well known, it'll already have a loyal customer following. So when you open a new division, people will want to come because they'll be confident of its quality. So again, let's say you're opening a new restaurant, a pizza place. The restaurant is already well known because it has such good pizza. So when you open your own restaurant with the same name in a new location, people know your pizza is going to be really good too. They'll go to your restaurant because they already trust that they'll have a good experience there. 好的,听力过后呢,我们就来参考一下这一份答案。There are two benefits of franchising. 那么最好啊,咱们开头的时候用这样一个句子来开始咱们作答。First, the established company would provide training. They would teach the new company about all aspects, and the new business would have a plan to follow. For example, if someone wants to open a pizza restaurant, somebody from the established company would give him training on how to prepare the pizza, how to take orders, and how to operate. This makes things much easier. Secondly, the new business will have an established customer base because it uses its name as an established company and customers are more likely to have confidence about the quality of their product. 
For the same example, if this pizza restaurant is already well known for its good pizza, then when it opens up a new branch restaurant, people already know its pizza is good and would go to this restaurant to eat. 大家没必要非得有结语，但是如果有的话也是不错，是不是 ？These are the two ways of franchising or benefits of franchising. 那么这个地方有结语也是可以的，没有结语也是不是非得必须的。那么咱们学到一点啊，就是咱们答题的结构一定要非常的清晰。首先啊，把咱们的观点先亮出来。那么 this is our argument. 不管是回答什么类型的题，这种提供的信息的题也好啊 ，there are two ways or there are two benefits. 先进行概括一下，有 first, second， 有非常条理清晰的。咱们在做笔记的时候啊，不一定非得把这样的词写出来，咱们可以标号。然后做笔记的时候，最好是一个一个的词用逗号隔开，而不用写句子，这样比较好。那么以上呢就是咱们这一讲的全部内容了。下一讲呢就即将结合 TPO 的三十四套题为大家讲解一下做题的技巧。